In this part of the course, we're going to be planting seeds with our toes and growing fascia like bamboo shoots up from our feet to our seat. We'll work on the expiation of our soles, learn to retract our toes like claws, encouraging the foot to glute connection of the fascia, and learning to brace our feet and secure our ankles in order to stimulate the fascia to further development. For this, you'll need a firm, thin cylinder like a broom handle, a PVC pipe, or a rolling pin works pretty well as well. You need a roll up pair of socks, a block or a step to stand on with a wall or a pole for balance, a table or a counter to lean on. Additionally, you may also want to use some toe spreaders and a resistance band. If you're looking to become more athletic and have no injuries, then this program should be a big focus for you. I'd encourage you to do it anywhere from three to five times per week, though the first few exercises can be done every day for faster progress. If you have some injuries, then I would still encourage you to give this full session a go at least once and then stick with the bits that feel the best and feel free to do it as much as you like, but three times a week is a good amount of time with enough time to focus on the other more recovery focused parts of this course as well. If any of the exercise aggravates your issues, then leave it out, at least in the beginning. But I would say that the first few exercises of the sole roll and the toe curls should be done regularly by everyone who wants to get the most out of this course. I'd like to give a big thank you to Chong Ji from Secrets of Athleticism for the inspiration for many of these exercises. To start things off, we're going to do some sole expiation. After years of being mollycoddled in cushioned footwear, this is my number one go-to for rewilding our feet. Similar to rolling our feet out on a ball, but with a slight difference that with the ball, the knots can jump out of the way. With this, it's more of a steamroller action, and there's something in the linear direction of the roll that just feels more effective. To set up, you need some sort of firm cylinder, like a PVC pipe, a broomstick handle, or a rolling pin. I'd recommend having cylinders with at least two different diameters if you can. Also, you're going to want to do this in a door frame or with poles to lean on, as this helps you vary both the pressure and the angle you're going to apply through the foot. There are two techniques I want you to apply. One, starting with the thickest cylinder, you're going to put the ball of your foot on it and lift the toes. Now keeping the toes lifted, roll the foot from front to back. Start slow and with light pressure to get the sole warmed up and then you're going to build up to more weight and more speed if you wish. I want you to focus predominantly on the lateral arch or the outside edge of the foot and the battle to keep the pinky toe lifted. I'll explain why in a minute. Do some complete passes and then you're going to want to search about for specifically knotted areas. These will feel like lumps and could be painful to roll on. You want to find the right amount of pressure where it's uncomfortable but not sharp, like a good massage and you're in control of the pressure. The second technique we're going to apply is to find a knot or a particularly weak or sensitive spot and then you're going to reflexively pulse your weight on it, like this. So you're adding pressure and just when it's about to be too intense, you're quickly taking the pressure off again, all the while trying to fight to keep your toes lifted against the urge to want to grab. Over time and repetitions, this will help to strengthen and open up and undo the knots in your soles. Once you've spent a good two to five minutes on the thickest cylinder, then you want to get a thinner one and go again, rolling out the foot and pulsing your weight on specific spots. How long for? You're going to want to do five to 10 minutes minimum per foot, working down through the diameters. Also, I'd recommend you do this every day or every other day, especially in the beginning, from three to seven times a week. And I've put it as this part of the course because I think it's a great warm up before you do the rest of the Earth program. There are three arches in the foot. The medial arch, which is the inside and the most commonly talked about. The transverse arch, which goes across perpendicular to that. And the lateral arch, which is on the outside edge. As I've stated, I want the main target of your exploration to be on the lateral arch. The outside of the foot is the ground floor of the skeleton. The outside of the foot makes up the ground floor of the skeleton of our body. The calcaneus or the heel bone connects to the cuboid which connects into the pinky and the fourth toe. The big toe, second and third toe all connect into the talus via the navicular, which sits on top of the heel bone. 
as well as, or because of that, there's a lot of meat and muscle on the outside edge. And for those of us who overpronate, this is often very weak and therefore sensitive. If we can awaken and strengthen this side of it, then we'll be able to take more of the weight and help to restore balance to the bottom of our feet. Also, what happens when we step on something uncomfortable, the whole body reflexively jolts and tenses up. As we strengthen the bottom of our feet and its ability to bear weight on small objects, this aids in stopping the reflexive tension reaction upstream and helps us to move around and stay more relaxed in the body as it's not in this constant state of low level chronic tension from weak feet. As well as that, as we strengthen the outside arch of the foot, this aids in the medial arches development too. So for anyone with plantar fasciitis or flat feet, this is an exercise you're going to want to do very regularly. Additionally, you may want to hit the other arches as well. You can do the transverse arch like this. This feels nice in helping to spread out the toes. And the medial arch is worked best on an angle like this. It can feel really good. I mean like the best foot massage you've ever had. It's best done at the end of your session. It might give a new meaning to the term happy ending. A word of warning about this. The soul roll stimulated quite a big healing reaction for me. Like in Chinese medicine, the soles of our feet are connected with so many parts of our body and stimulating them can cause all sorts of reactions. I got night sweats nearly every night for a week. Also, it will fatigue the bottom of your feet. So if you do have foot issues, try not to be on your feet too much for the rest of the day after this or do it before bed instead. So in summary, we're rolling from front to back of our soles, keeping our toes pulled up as best we can and prioritizing the outside edge. Also, pulsively loading our weight on and off the knotted tender spots, working down in diameter to smaller rollers for five to 10 minutes per foot. And I'd recommend you do it every day if possible, especially in the beginning. In my opinion, the sole roll really gets the low hanging fruit in terms of foot gains. It is one of the easiest and most effective ways to improve the strength and health of our feet, starting at the very bottom. Time to get to know our souls a little better. Well, let the toe fall down, because what's gonna happen is when you're weak, you're not trained on it. See yeah. my foot? See how I can put when, all my foot on? When I do it, my toe. Now put, put it in the back of the meat part. I'll get out of the light. Now, let's give some attention to one of the most neglected parts of our bodies. We're going to be strengthening the 10 tips at the end of the chain as we wrap out curls with our toes. To set up, all you're going to need for this is a rolled up pair of socks. My preference is medium thickness, but feel free to experiment to find the best pair for you. You may also want something to lean on so you can really dig in once we begin. And an option to wear toe spreaders if you like. Drive the ball of your foot into the lower edge of the rolled up pair of socks and grip the socks with your toes as hard as you can for a split second and then release. You want to make sure you keep your heels slightly lifted off the floor so the weight is in the front of the foot driving down as the toes grip in. Now repeat reps of this over and over until the fatigue is too much. It could take anywhere from one to three minutes per side. You might feel this in your foot, your calf or your shin or in your glutes which is the eventual goal and where you will feel it if you do this exercise often enough. Aglets are the little caps on the end of shoelaces that stop them from fraying. We also have telomeres which act in the same way on the end of our chromosomes. I believe that our toes act in a similar way to these but for our fascia. And so if our toes are underdeveloped due to growing up in shoes from too young an age then therefore they may not be doing a job they were designed to do. Another metaphor I like is to see our toes like tuning pegs on a guitar and our body as the instrument. If the pegs are too loose, the notes sound off and the guitar will not be able to play harmonious music. If our toes are too weak, then the fascia in our body may not be tensioned right, contributing to lack of harmony in our movement due to slack in the network. And when we overuse the body in this fragile place, it causes fraying in the fascia upstream, like a tear in a pair of tights which could be felt as pain in the ankle, knee or possibly hip with a variety of names for the symptoms or potentially in the same route as the weakness in the toes. And as we strengthen the toes, this helps us to batten down the hatches and secure the end of the line.
where we feel the fatigue when we do this exercise could be where the fraying is. And over time, and with reps in the toes pulling on the network, the holes start to become filled in until we're able to feel the pull for the toes to curl come all the way from our glutes as the network is rebuilt and the correct viscosity restored. To cover all of my toes when I do this, I have two focuses. I do most of my reps with a big toe focus as this naturally pulls on the second and third toes as well. And I do some of my reps with a fourth toe focus as this also pulls on the third and fifth toes too. In summary, you're going to drive the ball of your foot into the floor, keeping the heel slightly lifted and squeeze as tightly as you can with the toes. Repeat this until you're totally fatigued and then swap feet. It should take around one to three minutes. I'd recommend you do this every day if you can or otherwise every other day as part of the Earth program or your own program. They say if you take care of the pennies, the pounds look after themselves. So maybe if we take care of our toes, our legs and glutes will take care of themselves. Here we're going to practice retracting our toes like a tiger to ratchet down the tips like telomeres on a chromosome. To set up, all you need is a naked foot and your strongest spoon bending mind abilities. First move, you're simply going to lift up your toes and pull them towards your shin bone with force. Then you're going to try to claw them down by bending at the second knuckle and finally squeeze the toes into a little foot fist. Let me go over that again. Lift, then try to retract at the second knuckle then make a fist with your foot. Lift, retract, squeeze. Pull, claw, clench. Just those three moves over and over until your shin, your tibialis anterior is on fire. It should take about one to two minutes if you're doing it with the right focus and intention. You want to see the extensors on top of the foot start to pop. This will become more prominent over time. It's good to pair this with the toe curls, either daily or with the earth program. What does it do? Much like in the toe curls, we're working to strengthen the tips of our toes like they are aglets to a shoelace or tuning pegs to a guitar. I believe this retraction action helps to ratchet the end of the fascial line to take the slack out of the fascial chain. Essentially, this is just another way to hit the toes at a slightly different angle to the toe curls with all the corresponding energy channels and soft tissues upstream. If you see a lot of top athletes with the shoes off, you may notice their toes are fixed bent at the second knuckle like this position trains. And over time, you will notice the underutilized second knuckle become thicker on your own feet. Again, just like on the toe curls, you might want to focus some of your time trying to bend at the big toe, which will pull in the second and third toes as well, and some time focus on the fourth toe, which will pull in the third and fifth toe as well. So to summarize, all you're going to do is lift, retract, and squeeze. Pull, claw, clench. Simple instructions but it may feel like bending spoons at first. But in a short space of time, you will gain dexterity around this ability and all the benefits that come with greater toe strength as well. Our feet have a set of intrinsic core muscles, much like our torso. And just like a boxer who trains to be able to take a body shot, it's good to train our feet to brace for impact too. This is an activation exercise that you need to be able to do in order to get the most out of the next part of the program. You may have to focus a little more time on it in the beginning, then once you understand it and can do it on demand, you won't need to spend so much time doing it. So we're simply going to tense or brace the middle of the foot. This should naturally shorten the foot, hence why it's often named short foot. You can think about squeezing to bring the toes and the heels towards each other but really I feel that's a byproduct of bracing the foot correctly anyway. The one big clue we're looking for to show that we're doing this correctly is that the anterior tibial tendon should engage and become visible right above the bend where the shin and the foot meet. You may need to play around with different cues for yourself to make this happen. In the beginning it took me a minute to get this tendon to engage, but within a few days I was able to do it on demand. So for this section, I just want you to spend one or two minutes trying to brace the core of your foot and get your ATT to engage and become visible. Once you have it, walk around and see if you can keep it on. Just like I alluded to in the intro, we can brace our feet for impact. And in fact, this should happen naturally. But for whatever reason, mainly I'd say is growing up in cushioned shoes, our feet either lost this ability or never had it. So we're going to consciously train it for a while until it does it naturally by itself, the way it was designed. If you look closely on many top athletes, you may notice this tendon engage at all times during action. This helps stabilize the foot 
and lock the ankle in order to do strenuous tasks. If you don't have this natural support, we can run into a variety of issues many of us already have with our feet and ankles. In the rest of this earth program, as we start to include the feet more and connect them with the legs and the glutes, we want to be able to brace them properly in this manner to set a strong, stable foundation. So in summary, I want you to spend one to two minutes trying to brace your foot by tensing it or pulling the toes and heels towards each other. You know you're doing it right because the anterior tibial tendon will become visible on the front of your shin. Once you can do this, walk around briefly to practice keeping it braced, under pressure, before we incorporate other actions with the rest of the program. Now it's time to work on our foot to glute connection in a low impact way. To set up, you're going to want something to stand on to raise your standing leg a few inches off the ground. You can use a block like this, a thick book or a step. You may also want a pole or a wall to use for balance. Then stand on the platform and engage the core of your foot, making sure the ATT is visible and maybe the toe extensors too. And do the same with the other foot as well. Now you're in place, you're simply going to swing the other leg back and forth over and over till you're too fatigued to stand on that leg anymore. It could take anywhere from one to three minutes each side. You might feel this in your foot, your calf, your quad or the glutes which is the goal and where you will notice it more and more as the weeks go by of you following the earth program. This exercise is simply about building the connection from our feet to our seat. We're simulating running mechanics with our foot braced, but without the impact of running. This encourages the fascia to grow up our legs like ivy up the side of a house. One variation I enjoy is to band the standing leg, either by the knee or the ankle. This gives you something to lean into in order to simulate the angle of running mechanics even more. Also, if you want, you could try it with rolling rope in the underhand pattern to really put a figure of eight through the ankle. So in summary, you're gonna stand on one elevated leg and using a pole or a wall for balance if you need it, you're gonna swing the other leg until fatigue forces you to stop. Simple and effective method for training our glutes, all the while honoring human locomotion. Here we have one of the main exercises for strengthening the core of our feet and stimulating fascia development all the way from foot to butt. For this, especially in the beginning, I'm going to request that you have a surface to lean on, like a table or a kitchen countertop. Also, this is best done with bare feet and on a hard surface if possible. So you're going to start on two feet and lean your weight onto your hands or forearms on the table. Now brace the core of your feet Make sure that the ant tib tendon is visible and your ankles are stabilized. Keep a slight bend in the knees and gently start to bounce on the balls of your feet. You want to start light and the key is to make sure your heels stay floating off the ground. As you warm into it, you can gradually take more and more weight off the upper body and onto the feet, as long as it doesn't disconnect the core of the foot from bracing upon impact with the ground. A clear sign of this is if the heels start to touch the ground. You should eventually start to feel the burn in either of your feet, calves or glutes. You want to keep going until failure or close to it. It should take anywhere around 90 seconds to 2 minutes. If it's too easy and your feet are healthy, you can start to explore a variety of angles like this. Or if you have a pair of WEC Method Pro Pulsers, this is a perfect exercise to use them for. Once you've done one set on two feet, rest for a short while, and then we're going to up the difficulty and go on one leg. Set up for it the same way, but ease into it even more gradually and take as much weight into the upper body as you need in order to once again not break the core of the foot or let the heel hit the ground. It's really important that we have humility when approaching this exercise. It may look simple and easy, but if we don't honor where we're at, we won't be able to make progress. We're trying to find the right intensity where we can accumulate reps and time on each foot with the foot brace and ankle locked without so much force that it collapses and breaks down. Imagine going into a boxing gym and the hardest puncher in the gym hits you with the body shot in your very first session. Your core is unlikely to be able to handle it. It's the same with our feet. We want to acknowledge where they're at and build up from there. When I first started this exercise, I couldn't hop on either leg and keep my foot braced and heel lifted without support on my arms. 
Now I'm able to do it on my left leg, but my right is still not there, so I honour that. Once again, you're going to go to failure, which could be somewhere around 1-2 to two minutes, and then take a short break before swapping to the other leg. This exercise helps us to strengthen the core of our foot in order to stay braced under load in a safe and controlled way. As well as that, I believe the pulsing action with the foot tensed sends vibrations up the fascia and stimulates new growth wherever it is lacking upstream until it grows all the way up to the glutes and becomes like an active web throughout the whole of the lower body. So in summary, you're going to lean your weight on your arms Brace your feet and start to bounce, keeping the heels lifted and foot tense the whole time. Do one set close to failure on two feet, and then one more set on each of the legs individually to failure. Hop humbly and use as much support as you need. You'll notice the strength of your feet progress over time, and you'll start to feel it more and more in your glutes as the weeks go by too.